The only thing flat earthers have to fear is a sphere itself. <laughs> so we have hollow conducting sphere. We're going to be looking at what happens inside it and outside it as well. So we're going to look at you know the, the differences here. So let's assume now this is like maybe some metal that can conduct electricity very well. Um, let's assume, for example, in this case, it's positively charged just for fun. And we'll consider what's going on outside of it before we consider inside. So first of all, let's consider, uh, remember with this one right here, um, electric field lines are going to be going outwards. They go outwards because that's the direction that a positive test charge would go, for example. So this right here would happen. We're also going to have electric potential. So let's just remind ourselves of the different equations we have. So electric field strength, for example, is minus delta VE over delta R. And let's not forget for electric potential, we have VE equals KQ over R. So basically we have nothing special there, so basically everything as normal. So what does that mean? That means that if we had a graph, for example, of electric field strength against R here, now keep in mind if we took the absolute value here just to keep it positive here, and we compared that also to an, uh, a graph of, for example, um, the potential versus R, both of them, at least outside the sphere, would be nice and simple. They both just kind of go down and down like this. So that's what both of those do. No problem there because they're both one over R's. So let's take a look at what happens inside the sphere. So remember now for electric field, let's just again look at the equations here. Let's just remind ourselves here. Electric field, remember, is minus delta VE over delta R. And we have here that V equals KQ over R. Well, for, let's deal with the electric field maybe first. So I was just rewriting these equations here, but let's actually think about this now. inside of the sphere, what's going on. So what's gonna happen then is all of the charge, it's on the outside of the sphere. If you're sitting inside of it, you're looking around at all this charge, right? And it's all equally spread out. So with all of that charge, all on the outside, for example, all evenly spread out like this, the net force on that center then is gonna be zero. They're all gonna cancel each other out. And since the electric field strength is just equal to F over Q. If F is zero, that means E is zero. Okay, so if F equals zero, that means E equals zero. So what's the conclusion that we can make from this? Well, we can say that the electric field inside then will be zero. Now, what about the electric potential? Well, we can say then that, you know, because E equals zero, remember the E equals, you know, uh, delta VE over delta R. This helps us because this VE right here that we we're looking at, this little electric potential, this is right here. Now, if the change is zero, because remember, that's what this means. This is the change in potential. That means then that VE must be constant. Now remember what that means. If if the electric potential is constant, what does that mean? Well, that means it doesn't require any work then to go, for example, from the center to the surface. You know, no work is needed. Let's see if we can put these into context. So uh, let's do an example here. So we have a hollow conducting sphere. It has a radius r. So that means from 0 to r here, this is in the center of it, basically, and this is the outside. Sketch the following. We're supposed to sketch the electric field inside and outside the sphere and do the electric potential inside and outside. But we can just use the information we just learned. Right, so back here, for example, we just said, hey, the electric field, for example, inside electric field is zero. That's because the net force is zero. Remember, if the force is zero, that means the electric force is zero because of this equation. So because of that, then I know for sure then this one here must start off here, must go there. What about the electric potential? Well, remember, we just talked about this, right? That this one right here, well, uh, electric field is the change in potential. So the potential here must be constant. There must be no change. So if there's no change, what does that mean? Well, that means it must be constant. Constant value. I don't know what it is. Let's just guess at some value, but some constant value. Now, both of these, however, have a 1 over, like, you know, we have that E is proportional to 1 over R. And we have that V is proportional to 1 over R. Now, E, for example, uh, this one here, remember, was a negative, but we're just considering the absolute value here. And this one here is the electric potential. You remember, it's just KQ over R. So if that's the case, then this thing here will start off with some arbitrary value right here and just go down like it should. And this one here will go down like it should. So do you notice the difference then? So the difference is this one here started off as, you know, I mean, it goes like this right here. Whoops, I just did a bad job here. So it goes up and then it goes down. Whereas the first one, 
sorry, the second one here, this one here just goes like this here. So it just follows that one over R. That's it.